Hello, welcome to the Mythology Manifest. Today's video is going to be about the god of fire and metalwork, Hephaestus. I hope you enjoy it. Now, you all know that I love Greek mythology, but there is just one thing that irritates me about it, and that's the timelines. For example, Aphrodite, who I will be discussing in a later video, is involved in this particular myth. However, she's not meant to come into mythology at all until all the other gods have joined something called a pantheon, and that was a bit like a council for all of the Greek gods. Although all the timeline of this myth doesn't fit together perfectly, I still think it's incredibly fascinating, and will tell it how it's always been told. I really do think that you'll find this myth as fascinating as I do. So this myth begins at the end of my last one, which was a video about the birth of Athena. If you've not seen that one, I'll leave a link to it down in the description. So, Hera, the queen of the gods and goddess of family, had just found out that Zeus, her husband, had cheated on her on their wedding night and conceived a child named Athena, who had just been cut out of Zeus's head. It sounds a bit like a plot line for a TV soap drama, doesn't it? Hearing of her husband's adultery, Hera turned on her heels and fled his chamber, plotting a revenge and ignoring Zeus's calls, saying that he could explain. Like Rhea and Gaia in the earlier myths, Hera was quite vengeful and not a goddess she wanted to get on the wrong side of. Being the goddess of mothers and families, Hera knew that she had all the power she needed to put Zeus through the same pain as he had her. She was going to have her own secret child, but not by being adulterous as Zeus had. Hera was extremely angry, and in her anger, the queen of the gods went down from Olympus to the earth and began searching for a magical herb that she knew could only be found in a certain place where Gaia allowed it to grow. The name of this planet is unknown, but Hera knew what it would do and ate the herb before returning back to Olympus where Zeus was waiting for her. She didn't even look at her husband as she walked past him, and quickly she began her way through the palace on Olympus. Zeus begged her to let him explain, but she continued walking, and he followed her all the way to the bedroom they shared. At the door, she turned to him, and told him that there was no way he was sharing her bed that night, or for, ver for a very long time. Zeus tried to apologise to Hera, but she was far too stubborn to listen. In the end, she locked Zeus out of their shared room, and he knew better than to force his way in and receive more of Hera's wrath. After that day, Hera did not come out of her room for months. Zeus went to her door every day and asked her to come out and have something to eat or to speak to him. Each day, Hera refused and remained in the room. Unlike us, us humans, who haven't actually been created in the myths just yet, the gods did not need to eat or sleep, but they did tend to have nectar and ambrosia, the golden food and drink of the gods that cause pain or death to mortals once consumed by them. None of the gods knew what was going on on the other side of that door. Only Hera did. The queen of the gods had eaten the magical herb in order to get pregnant without having to cheat on Zeus. However, she was still terrified of what Zeus would do if he found out she was pregnant and thought it best to hide until she had birthed her revenge baby. Eventually, one night, Hera went into labour. This wasn't painful for her, being a very powerful goddess, and she easily gave birth to her child without making a sound. She was laughing to herself during the birth, knowing how much this would anger Zeus and how he could not say that to her because he had done the exact same thing. Hera brought the baby into her arms and looked down at it. It was a he, and he was already growing. That was because gods grow at an unnatural rate in order to reach their prime and stop ageing, becoming perfect and immortal, frozen in time. Hera was quite pleased with her new son, until she looked at all of him and saw that from the waist down, her son was deformed. His legs were hobbled, and she knew that he would have difficulty walking in the future. Despite being the goddess of mothers, Hera was really not overly maternal. Instead of being worried of, for the child's safety, she was worried about what other gods would say about her. She was a complete status freak. This child did not meet the criteria of looking perfect, which was needed to be welcomed onto Olympus and become an Olympian, as Athena had. Hera knew she would be mocked for this even more than having an adulterous husband. So, she went to her window and opened it. Her room was very high up in the palace of Olympus. She leant out and looked down before throwing her newborn, newborn son out of the window and off of Mount Olympus. 
With him being of Olympian blood, Heron knew he would not die, but she also knew he would never know where he came from and would never come back. Unfortunately for Hera, a group of sea nymphs saw what she had done and went and found the baby at the bottom of the mountain. Together they agreed that they would raise him for the first few days he would be growing. After that night, Hera came out of her room once more and continued to be as cold to Zeus as ever. He tried to speak to her, but he received nothing back. A few days later, Hera was walking around the Olympian palace and passed through a sort of throne room. She saw that her normal silver throne had been replaced by a larger one of shimmering gold. She assumed it was an apology gift from Zeus and sat in it. The minute she was seated, the arms curved and locked around her wrists and legs, trapping her in the seat. She called for help and all of the Olympians came to see her trapped in the throne. Each one had a go at freeing Hera, but all failed. This quickly escalated to Hera screaming at them to get her out and all of the others arguing among themselves about which was the best way to free her. They all got louder and louder until Zeus yelled at them to be quiet with a booming voice of thunder. They were all silenced immediately and looked to Zeus for an answer. He said that whichever one of the gods could release Hera would get to marry the most beautiful goddess of them all, Aphrodite. As this was something that they had also been arguing about, every single god wanted to free Hera even though Aphrodite wasn't meant to be in the myths yet, but I'm slowly moving past that. Before they all had a chance to try and help Hera and claim Aphrodite for themselves, a man walked into the throne room. The top half of him was perfect, and his eyes were the same white as the hottest flame. However, he used a stick to walk, and his legs were incredibly bent inwards and knobbly. He hobbled over to the throne where Hera had gone silent and ghostly white. The man tapped the throne with his walking stick, and it immediately released Hera. Zeus asked him who he was, and the man said he was Hephaestus, a name given to him by the sea nymphs who had raised him. He said that the sea nymphs had told him that he was the child of Hera, and Hera alone, whom she had thrown off of Mount Olympus because of his deformity. He said that he made the throne from fire and gold, and had been hiding on Olympus waiting for Hera to sit on it, so he could free her and take his place as the Olympian god of fire and metalwork. When Hera finally admitted that this was her son, he was welcomed by Zeus and the others, and granted the status of Olympian god. Hera was mocked by the other gods for failing to enact revenge on Zeus, but she was not the only goddess who was left humiliated. Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty, now had to marry him against her will. But that will be another video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now, I think this myth teaches us that we shouldn't judge people on their appearance and not to make rash decisions in the heat of the moment. If you found this video informative, please like, comment or subscribe. Thank you for helping me keep classics alive. My next video will be on the god of war, Ares. I'll see you next time on the Mythology Manifest.